Welcome to Detail and Scale, where we'll be building Fine Mole's 172nd Slave 1 from the film Empire Strikes Back. Fine Molds is a Japanese company who does exquisite injection mold scale models. It's important to look at the instructions thoroughly as the kit is quite complex. Do a bit of research as well. Get some old magazines or even some reference material from Industrial Light and Magic or Lucasfilm, the original constructors of it. It's important also to wash all the kit components. Every single piece of injected mold of plastic has come out of a mold covered in release agent. You essentially need to wash your kit parts in soapy water with a lukewarm temperature as you don't want to deform the parts. Let them naturally air dry. Now it's time to take the pieces off the sprue using a sprue cutter. Give yourself a small bit of excess plastic, you can always then trim it back with a scalpel blade. Here we have the main cockpit components. I'm going to use Tamiya's extra thin cement to essentially glue them together. Tamiya's extra, thin, thin, ex, Tamiya's extra thin cement is excellent as it uses capillary action. I'm also using Tamiya's surface primer. It's a great base to then paint on your main color. It tightens up extremely well giving a good um, base for your colors to work on. Now what I'm going to do is essentially I'm going to add some pre-shading to this. I'm using Tamiya's acrylics here and I'm using X28 to thin them out. Rule of thumb is when you're using an airbrush you want the consistency of full fat milk. Now I'm going to use a harder and Steinbeck airbrush. I generally airbrush between 18 and 20 psi. It's also important to wear a respirator as you don't want to inhale the chemicals used afterwards. Here I'm testing my airbrush. It's important to get a very fine line when doing your pre-shading. At the back of my airbrush I can control the amount of flow of paint that goes in. And the closer I get to the actual uh, object, the thinner the line gets. So it's so important to test on a piece of paper the consistency of your airbrush. Also take into consideration the room temperature and the amount of moisture in the atmosphere before painting. Once I'm happy with the consistency and the line I'm getting from my airbrush, it's now time to move on to my cockpit components. I'm going to follow the actual panel lines in this piece. I don't need to be too strict with myself, just that I'm getting a hint of um, where the panel lines are. And now I'm going to come along after this and give a light coat of the main colour. Again, I'm just using light coats and I'm constantly moving the airbrush back and forth. You don't want it to stay in one place too often. Testing my airbrush again happy with the consistency of my paint, I'm just going to go back and forth and give it light coats. This is an interior green, which was what was used in the actual original ship. Now I'm going to do a bit of post shading, adding a couple of drops of white in just to give a lighter colour. I'm going to add a bit of X28 thinner as well just to thin it out a bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the main um, panels, trying to avoid the panel lines itself. This gives a bit of a scale effect and makes the model look less like a toy and more like a finished article. Once this is done, I've essentially sealed the model in and I'm going to make myself a wash using compressed charcoal. I use a mixture of black and uh, dark earth brown. Now I'm going to add a drop of washing up liquid. This will um, allow the water to mix with the charcoal a lot easier. It's important to give this a thorough stir as you want the charcoal and the water to mix. And I'm going to apply this all over my components and leave it dry for about 15 minutes. 
After I've done this, I'm going to get a cotton cloth. I'm going to wipe off the excess on the surface, leaving the darker wash in the cracks and panel lines, just to give it a bit more depth. Now I'm going to apply a bit of a metal coat using the dry brush technique. Taking most of the paint out, I'm now going to lightly cover the pieces of the cockpit which are sticking out and then go over them again with a cotton bud, slightly polishing them and bringing up that metal, metal um, worn look. Now the final components of the cockpit are going together using Tamiya's Extra Thin Glue. Again, capillary action will drag the thin glue along the cracks, so each part is bonded uh, correctly. Any excess glue will then evaporate. Now I'm going to move on to the wing components, again using my clippers and giving myself a lot of excess plastic. Again, you just need to dab on the uh, Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Effectively, it melts either side of the plastic and then it will form a single bond. And now I'm going to start in the main body, using my sprue cutters, giving myself a bit of excess, and then going to trim it off with the scalpel afterwards. I'm now going to reinforce the two halves of the main fuselage with a bit of plastic card, before then adding the rest of the components onto the main body. I'm now going to fill the panel lines by the two sides of the fuselage using a bit of um, Tamiya uh, yellow tape to mask off and now I'm going to use Mr. Surfacer 500 to fill the gaps in between. This is a cellu cellulose based um, filler. I'm going to put it on quite generously because a lot of it will in fact evaporate and other parts will sink into the gaps between the two pieces of fuselage. I'm going to get my scalpel, scrape off the excess, and then afterwards I'm going to get a hard sander and sand it back. I'm now going to get a rescribing tool. This will rescribe the panel lines that I essentially sanded off in the first place. Now what I've done is I've pre-shaded the main components for the body, and now just giving a light coat. I do want the pre-shaded um, lines to appear on my paste but very subtly, giving that weathered look. Again using an air pressure of between 18 and 20 psi. I'm now going to use the hairspray technique. I've covered the whole model in hairspray and I'm going to paint over the main colour. I'm going to chip it away with a, with a brush dipped in water and essentially it will give a distressed and chipped look. This is the first coat. I'll now do a second coat as well, just to give a bit of contrast between the pink and the whole red on the bottom fuselage. Again, I'm going to put the main colour on top and do the same with the top of the fuselage. Now I'm going to use Masco. Essentially it's a rubberized compound which I'm going to spray on with a toothbrush. And then what it will do is we'll dry and then I'll spray over this and I'll get another distressed look. Put some Mitsubishi Green, rub the essential mask all off with my thumb and what you get is a very nice effect. 
Now the last couple of panel lines are painted. Again, I'm masking everything off with the Tamiya masking tape, buffable primer, and again I'm using the hairspray technique on the engine components to give them a distressed look. I'm giving the bottom of my hull a wash now, and now it's time to start fitting the final components together. Starting here with the wing components. Next job will be to um, add the decaling. For this purpose, I'm using a Mr. Decal Softener, and that's some lukewarm water, which the water slide decals will then go in. Give them a couple of seconds to soften up. Apply your decal softener, and then slide on the decal. Once you have it in position and you're happy with it, you can then roll a cotton bud over to take off the excess moisture. Now all the components are ready. They've been sealed in with an, uh, an acrylic varnish. And what I'm going to be using is Rocket Max Super Glue. This is quite a thick super glue, so it'll stop it from running around the model. And the last thing you want is a mistake or some smudges around your model. So a thick um, super glue is very handy. I'll also be using a crystal clear super glue in the green box of Light Deluxe to um, glue in the clear parts. The actual model itself, uh, the original Star Wars model, was actually made from um, old model components. So parts of old Tamiya tanks, old airfix kits were actually used to make the original Star Wars model back in the late 70s, early 80s in Pinewood in the UK. Here the bottom and top section are now made together. I've uh, been quite generous with the super glue Now it's time for the final reveal. I hope you've enjoyed building fine molds with me. See you next time in Detail and Scale. End.